All right, lecture nine, switch statements and random number generation. So switch statements are very similar to if statements in that you can control the logical operation of a program. So um, it can be replicated with an if statement. You can use if, else if, and else. Um, however, switch, it just makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit clearer. And when you're dealing with user inputs, for example, I'll show you an example in a second. Um, it just makes it simple with integer input. So zero for this, you can put a case, and then that value number right here, you would put zero and you can account for that zero. Case one, you can account for that zero, that one. So this next example I'm gonna show you, it's very relevant to me, right? So the example uh, description, prompt the user to enter the number that corresponds with their favorite player. Zero for LeBron, one for Kobe, two for Michael Jordan, three for Shaq, four for Kevin Durant. Again, in program, we always start at zero. Respond to the user's favorite player with different statements per player, okay? So let's see how we would do this in an if statement. So you see here, I have my system not outs, who is your favorite player? And then zero LeBron James, one Kobe Bryant, two Michael Jordan, three Shaquille O'Neal, four Kevin Durant, all right? Then I'm reading in whatever they put, they enter, whatever number they enter. I have an int option equals integer dot parse int, whatever input they put in, if they put a zero, it's gonna convert that to an integer zero. One, two, three, four. And then I have my if statements. If option zero, obviously that's a good choice. LeBron is a really good player. Um, if option one, still a strong answer, RFP Kobe Bryant. If option two, MJ was pretty good. Option three, the most dominant player in history, Shaquille O'Neal. And uh, option four, KD is a good score, All right? So again, how does this program work? Well, first we prompt the user to enter in their favorite player. Right? That's our system.outs. We're telling them what to do. It's all we're doing up here. Enter in your favorite player. Next, we create our scanner object and we read that option from the console, being sure to convert that string into an integer. We have our if option zero, we print good choice. Else if option equals one, strong answer. Else if option two, MJ is pretty good. Else if option three, the most dominant player in history. And then else if option four, KD is a good score. Now we'll go to modifying a brief statement example with a switch. Before that, I wanna show you this in the code for Java, Java application. Next, we're doing lecture nine. All right, so our first set of code was to tell the user what to do. So system dot out dot print line. Who is your favorite player? Then we give them all the different prompts. Zero for LeBron James. System out dot print line. One for Kobe Bryant. System dot out dot print line. Two for Michael Jordan. System dot out dot print line. Three for Shaquille O'Neal. And then system dot out dot print line. Four for Kevin Durant. Your favorite player may not be on this list, but I'm sorry, there are just too many players. All right. So the next thing we want to do is actually read in whatever the user inputs, right? I just want them to input a zero, one, two, three, or four. So of course, to read in from the console, we need a scanner equals new scanner, system.in. We have to import our scanner. And then, what is the issue here? And then let's read in that input. 
int option equals integer dot percent input dot next. Again, you can use input dot next int as well, either way. Then we have our if statements for each one. If option equals zero, we want to print out when they choose LeBron. I want to print out good answer. And I want to else if option equals one. I want to print out what do I want to say? Strong answer. Else if option equals two system dot out dot print line MJ was good too. <laughs> Don't let the last dance sway y'all particularly towards Michael Jordan. Option three system dot out dot print line the most dominant player in history. And then lastly, else if option equals four. System dot out dot print line. KD is a good scorer. And I want to do an else, because else they entered in something that I don't want. So I'll say system dot out dot print line um, invalid option. All right. Now let's run this and see what happens. So it says, who is your favorite player? Zero for LeBron, one for Kobe, two for Michael Jordan. Of course, I'm going to put zero in here. And you see it says good answer. If I run this again, if I put two in here, MJ was good too. If I put four in here, oh, I put 43, invalid option. Let's try that again. If I put four, KD is a good score. Now let's try an invalid option. If I put seven, it will say invalid option. Okay. Questions about that? Those are your if statements. We did that last week should look familiar to you. If not, let me know. Email me, send it in the chat, or you can say it out loud. All right. Well, I can do all of this with a switch statement. It just looks a little bit better. Again, you can do this in if, else if, if that's easier for you, or you can use a switch statement. So if we go back to our slides. A switch statement, the main difference you see, we still have the if option equals zero, else if, else if. Well, we just use switch. We do switch, we put our option in here, and then for each case, we add zero, one, two, three, four, and then our default is if none of those were selected. Okay? Just run through this. Again, prompt the user to enter in a number that corresponds to their favorite player. Then we say, we create our scanner object and we read in that option from the console. We create our switch statement, all right? Our switch statement, we put our option in here and then we have our opening and closing brackets down here. Then for each case, we have the same logical progression as the if statement. But look here, we do need our break. For each one of these cases, we do need a break statement or it will keep going down case after case. And if they're all true, it will run all of them. But we only want them to run one, so we include those break statements. Case one, strong answer. Case two, MJ is pretty good. Case three, the most dominant player in history. Case four, KD is a good scorer. 
And then our default, if none of those are true, you didn't make a valid choice. Right? Things to note, the expression for a switch statement must be an integer, this option right here. Right? Uh, each option must start with a case keyword. Right? So right there, right there, right there, right there, and right there. The option value for each case goes after that case keyword. So zero, one, two, three, and four. And then each one of those options must contain a break or the switch statement will keep um, checking each one. So that break right there, right there, right there, right there and right there, okay? And then why use a switch statement versus if statement? Uh, if there is a set number of possible options, a switch statement can be used. So if you know all the different options, switch statement works very well. A switch statement provides a cleaner and more concise option than if. And switch statements are great if you're prompting the user for different options. So let's go back to our example and let's change this into a switch. So instead of this if, we'll have switch option, then our opening, eventually our closing bracket down here. Right. All of this will go inside of this right here. So our first case, case zero, colon, right? You need a colon, and then break. Right here, case one, colon, break. Right here, case two, colon, break, case three, colon, break, again, case four, colon, and a break. And our last one is our default, default. And we do not need this closing bracket because we have one for our switch right here, okay? And there you go, this is our switch statement. Again, same logic as an if statement. If I hit run, I put in zero, good answer. If I hit run, I put in three, the most dominant player in history. Hit run again, I put in a seven, invalid option, okay? Any questions? No questions, comments, concerns? We're gonna talk about random number generation after this. So how do we create a random number, okay? Well, um, I actually had a quick question. Okay. Um, so for the switch statements, um, because like, um, because I've, I've, I know kind of like how to use the if statements. I've used them a lot more than I have with the switch statements. Mm -hmm. So, um, so like for instance with the switch statements, can you do like, um, I guess like comparing operators like with the switch statements? So like an if statement. Um, yeah. So you would just use an if statement for that circumstance. Okay. So if you so for like switch statements, it's more of like um, if you have like a kind of a more definitive like oh if like option one is zero, right. then you can kind of do whatever in the code instead right. of more of like kind of comparing. Um, okay. Yeah. If statement is much better for that. Okay, gotcha. I was just making sure because, like I said, I have I don't really use switch statements that much, so I'm not necessarily the kind of um, best at them. Right, and then, like I said, it's really good when you're doing a user prompt like this, where they're just entering zero, one, two, three, four, then you got your different cases. Okay. Okay. All 
right? So now... Appreciate you. No problem. Now, let's do our Kahoot quiz. Again, the top three performers. Um, actually, let's do this at the end. Let's do this at the end. Let's continue, and then we'll come back to the Kahoot quiz because it covers the whole, whole thing. All right. So pseudo random number generation. Computers are not capable of doing a truly random because there's no such thing as truly random in, uh, in nature. Well, at least with computing, All right? You can get close, it's pseudo random, and that's just a limitation of, of computers, right? They can't calculate a random number. It's just not possible because it comes down to zeros and ones. Um, there are different options you can do. Again, random, ran equals new random. It's pseudo random. It's about as close to random as you can get. Um, or you can do random ran equals new random and then put in a seed value. And that seed value gives it some type of random number from which to work off of. So typically people use the um, current value of the current time value of milliseconds. Um, because time doesn't stop, it's always a different value. And so that provides a random seed from which that random number generation can come from, okay? Using random ran equals new random without that seed value is just fine as well, unless you need something a little bit extra, a little bit more random. If you're doing encryption, for example, maybe you want something a little bit more random. All right, so we do need to create a random object, which is what this is doing. Random ran equals new random, similar to a scanner object, right? Then these are the methods we have available to us. We have next boolean. It can randomly generate a true or false value. Next double, a random double between zero and one. Then we must multiply whatever that random value is times our desired maximum value in order to get it within a range. For example, if we want to get it between zero and 30, we would do next double times 30, right? That value is going to be between zero and one. So if you multiply whatever that random value is times 30, you can get a max of 30 and a minimum of zero. With next integer, however, with the method, you can put in a max value and it will generate a random integer between zero and whatever that max is. So next int gives it built in, whereas next double you have to do it yourself. So here we have our old problem we had, we were running, reading in from the console. However, this time we're just gonna generate a random integer. So let's do that. Instead of reading in from the console, let's create a random value or a random object. Random rand equals new random without a seed value. We have to import that random object, import java.util.random. And let's do int option equals ran.next int with a max of four. And I'm gonna just print out the option so we know what was generated. Okay. So let's hit run. You see it said a two, MJ was good. If I run this again, it's, it's two again, two again. Now it's a three, it's two again, three, one, strong answer, three, one, three, two. You see each time I'm, gener I'm running this and the option is changing sometimes, right? It's, it's random, so you never know what you're gonna get, all right? Create a random object and that's it. 